Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now don't you hate it when you get to work, your briefcase is slapped on the desk, you crack it open and oh no, instead of your work things you've accidentally brought your R9295X2 graphics card into the office. Happens all the time. <laughs> Seriously though, this is the R9295X2 from AMD, it launched in 2014 and it's a pretty beastie GPU to say the least, so much so it came in its own metal briefcase. Now this was a 500 watt card, or it is a 500 watt card, you're going to need an 850 watt plus power supply ideally in order to run it, at least that's what I used, and for the past couple of days this has been the stuff of my personal nightmares. So. Back in 2014, this was intended toward 4K gamers. Now, this wasn't something too common back then. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone uh, among your friends who was gaming on PC at 2160p. I think a lot of tech YouTubers as well probably didn't even have 4K monitors. So the R9295 cost $1,500, and if you wanted the best of the best from AMD back then, then this would have been the one to get, because... A lot of games were utilising dual GPU configurations and it would mean that you'd see an astronomical boost in some instances with two cards under one neat metal shroud. These days though, well we all know how dual GPU solutions go and what I mean by that is that it simply isn't a good idea, hence why this card has been giving me nothing but grief for the past day or two. So the R9 295 then, it combines two R9 290Xs on a single board. It's actually liquid cooled. This is a reference liquid cooled design from AMD. It's so hot and power hungry that to avoid the throttling of the R9 290Xs, a water cooler was actually slapped onto this thing right out of the factory. And to be honest, I think it looks fantastic. It looks nice in a case. And while we're on the subject of my test setup here, I have some bad news. I couldn't actually get it working. Um, with my i5 10400F. At first, I plugged the card into the board, fired it up with my 850 watt PSU, and I thought perhaps that the PSU wasn't quite enough in order to run it. That wasn't the case because when I swapped it out for another motherboard, everything ran fine. It was just with my i5 and 10th generation motherboard that I couldn't get things to work, and I still don't know why. I mean, there was no BIOS update available for the card, or the motherboard that would allow me to get this thing working. So I then decided to switch it out for something entirely different. Gone was my i5 10400F, 16 gigs of DDR4 and basic ASRock motherboard. Instead, I switched to a first generation i7 very briefly just to get an idea of whether or not this thing would post with a processor that was a lot older. This processor would have been out for quite some time when this card had released, so I thought surely it must work, right? And it did. With the i7-860, the card ran fine and the dual GPUs both worked in combination with each other in games that supported it. However, it seems that the processor is too weak and we were seeing major problems in The Witcher 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, two games that do utilise Crossfire or SLI. I then decided to switch this out for something different as well, um, namely my i7-4770. This was a CPU that arrived in the post a couple of days ago and I'm lucky that it did really because it gave us something that was powerful enough to pair with the R929. 5x2 and hopefully see it reach its maximum potential when it comes to running games. So I jumped back into The Witcher 3, um, a game that runs really well even on a single R9290X but here with 1440p resolution and the high settings we were seeing at least 70 frames per second. Now unfortunately I don't have a 4k monitor so what I did on my 1080p monitor was enable virtual super resolution which let us run the games in 1440p instead of 1080 just to see what this card could do at that higher resolution and it was pretty much a flawless experience bar a couple of stutters here and there. When it came to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again, we saw excellent frame rates in the 70s with 1440p and the high preset once more, and to be honest, the experience was really enjoyable. 1080p is going to give you a little more performance boost, and of course, running this on a single um, R9 290X will give you about half of the frame rate. It scales really well in SLI. 
does the R9295X2. Now, if there isn't a default profile for Crossfire, you can attempt to enable it yourself from within the AMD software, but doing so can have detrimental effects. For example, here is Skyrim Special Edition, the remastered or re-released version of the original 2011 title, uh, which will support both GPUs if you force it to, but you'll end up with the following problem. And I must warn you, you're about to see some very flickery images. As you can see, the game runs with a pretty much solid 60 FPS, which is what it's capped to, because otherwise the engine just has a meltdown. And uh, yeah, it runs pretty well, but the flickering makes it, I'd say, unplayable in any instance, to be honest. There wasn't really anything I could do to alleviate this problem. If, however, we run Skyrim Special Edition with a single R9290X at Ultra with 1440p resolution, then we are still seeing a very respectable frame rate of about 55 to 60 frames per second. The game looks very nice, it runs very well, and overall, this was a pretty enjoyable experience. As most of you probably know, 2020, well, it's been the year of many disappointing things, but another one is pretty much the final nail in the coffin of SLI and Crossfire. Most games that release now simply don't support it, which is a shame to be honest, but I can sort of understand why. Um, so from this point forward, I decided to try a single R9290X within this thing instead. Can a single R9290X actually run games at let's say 1440p and 1080p in some instances. So actually I decided against that. I thought why not just go in at 1440p with a few modern games. Now the games I tested were the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and the new definitive edition of Mafia. Starting with Assassin's Creed then as it is the newest and we were able to run at 1440p albeit with the low settings. Now 1080p would of course be the ideal resolution to play at, but I thought why not push this card after all, once upon a time it would have been capable of this resolution. And even today, if you're aiming for plus 30 FPS, well it is still doable and Assassin's Creed here looks good even with the low preset. If we move on to Red Dead Redemption 2, well it performs even better to be honest with at least 30 frames per second. We're looking at 30 to 40 frames per second a lot of the time. This wasn't with the lowest preset either, this was with the balanced setting. So we have a mix of ultra, high and medium in terms of the graphical options here. Anti-aliasing is also switched on and at 1440p the game looks very good. We don't have to turn the TAA up as much on this 1080p monitor when running with VSR on either, so it looks nice and crisp, the game looks good, and it plays pretty well. Finally then, it's Mafia 2020 or Mafia Definitive Edition. Again, this looks pretty good, runs with at least 30 frames per second. Just like Red Dead 2, this is a more sort of slow-paced game, so I don't mind 30 FPS here. It looks nice and crisp as well at 1440p resolution. And to be honest, I'd happily play um, at 1440p with the R9-290X, or I should say a single GPU enabled. All we did here was really just disable one of the GPUs on the 295X2 for this experience. In fact, the r 9 290 GPUs on this thing are actually clocked a bit higher than a standard 290X so you're probably getting a little bit more performance here with a single GPU than you would be with an individual 290X so that's not bad. All in all then well I hope you've enjoyed this look at the 295X2 something that's pretty obsolete in the uh, 2020. I wonder if back in 2014 people would have thought this would be the case or whether they thought multi-GPU gaming would continue to be the future. Who knows? But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You can probably expect to see this card again at some point because as new games come out, I might test them with this card just to see what they can do. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.